So we're at the local hop and ice cream spot in summer called none other than Dairy Queen Grill and Chill. Now, we're not here for ice cream, we're here for chicken tenders and I'm perplexed as to why I will explain about these chicken tenders and also there's a very gross river but it, but it kind of sets that summer ambiance, you know? Swamp and chicken tenders, okay. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. If you come join me down here on the real thing cam, we have ourselves the sauced and tossed honey barbecue six piece tenders meal with fries. Got ourselves a little single burglar here, honey mustard. Now these I brought from home and yes, I have takeout ramekins at home. You know, I keep things very uh, professional with the sauce game. These are two hidden valleys and a ketchup. And I'm very ready to eat some banging chicken tenders. Come get this in all its natural light glory though. I gotta say, DQ's fries, banging. DQ's chicken strips, also banging. Their sauce, banging. Very all banging. All right, y'all. Very excited for a nice chicken strip. These things are amazing. DQ really does it proper. And here's what's perplexing about this situation. Let me tell you while I dab. This is what's perplexing about the situation of Dairy Queen having the most banging chicken tender that I could find. I was racking my brain. Yes, I'm in Canada. We don't have, I don't have Chick-fil-A. I don't have Zaxby's, any of that shit. I got KFC and Popeye's, but no other fast food places are offering chicken tenders so tell me how it is that a place renowned for its ice cream is also the place that has the most banging chicken tenders and honestly as well some of those banging fries They're actually amazing. And they're burgers. To be honest with you, DQ hits it out of the park all around, except for their prices. A little honey mustard action. DQ's prices, they're about to handle. For this strips, fries, single burger, bottle of water, 22 bucks. But hey, chicken strips are at a premium anywhere you go wings strips chicken is always expensive got all the all the fry dips today ranch ketchup honey mustard but the crisp on a dq fry is honestly one of the best crisps it's kind of halfway between a mcdonald's and a burger king fry not gonna lie very tough to say what the best thing to dip a fry is in. I like it all. Sweet and sour, mayo, ketchup, ranch, you name it. I feel like it all goes on fries. A garlic aioli. It all works. We're gonna hit more tenders here real soon. I know that's probably what you uh, wanted to see get crushed, but I like to let my chicken kind of come down a bit. So I'm gonna grab this burger here real quick. And I kind of want to touch on this. Uh, I don't know if any of you know about it. It's like lighting up the internet right now. A creator called Gabby Hanna. I used to kind of watch her shit way back in the day. I found out about her. Like I didn't watch her religiously. I just looked, like checked out her music and what she was all about. And I never like fell in love with her. Like the 20 other million people who apparently love her have fallen in love with her. But then she did some reckless and heinous shit over the years, which it seems a lot of YouTubers do. You get you know really big and famous and then you end up i don't know acting out and being crazy and i thought this was supposed to have cheese on it it's a hamburger weird but uh i think she went through a period of like cancellation cancellation station or we're ranching a bird today
a lot of people started to like really despise and dislike her but then she's got her ride or dies people that will always understand you kind of deal and uh recently she went on a upload rampage of what seemed like or what people were deeming a bipolar episode a manic mania induced really high high energy just spew of wild thoughts and felt like the cops call on her for wellness checks and stuff but like from fans and, and things like that <laughs> she's documenting it, documenting it live I just caught wind of it last night and because I'd heard of her before I was like alright let me go check this out on TikTok which I did and I scrolled through her rantings for quite some time because it's rather interesting to observe but I, my mom, growing up, bipolar, slight bit of like schizoaffective, and um, I've seen real mania. I've seen real delusions firsthand. I've visited my mom in the psych ward and uh, in that wing of the hospital where they get them all drugged up and make them stay for like, you know, weeks or months. I've seen the real shit. And while she was saying some kind of, you know, sporadic shit, a little bit non-linear, in the way that she was documenting things but her speaking itself the what she was trying to convey the way she was thinking and the whole religious stuff and god and all these things that she's speaking about is like it didn't sound like the rantings of really a lunatic but she was definitely like coming off that way in her character but to me she seemed lucid uh, very able to form thoughts and ideas and sentences that weren't insane sounding it was more like to me like her philosophizing and searching for answers or something like she's kind of having like a spiritual experience right and that's sometimes in mania a lot of times in mania the whole spiritual thing god jesus the devil the nature of reality all that stuff is very prevalent uh very prevalent in deluded you know episodes but this is why I say this, is that a lot of what she was saying was no different than what you'd hear, like, the pastor say in church. You know what I mean? Like, she was kind of just on that godly tip and the other thing that I'll say is she may be on med med medications she may have mental health issues or whatever but I also believe that she's obviously has like an artist brain right a creative brain an outward brain and the way I look at it is she's not a neurotypical thinker she's probably neurodivergent and these are the people in the world who don't think linearly 
they think outside of the box and they think deeper than your average human being. And these are the people who create other worlds for you to escape to, AKA Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, video games, cartoons, books. Do you think the guy who created or the woman, the person, the Zimzer, do you think the Zimzer who created uh, Game of Thrones, right, was a linear thinker? Didn't have an insane imagination, right? <laughs> do you go toss that person in the psych ward? I suppose you do if they if they believe that a dragon is stalking them in real life and they're running down the street screaming that they're getting attacked by a dragon then you might call a psych ward but I mean if they're just kind of theorizing and philosophizing and trying to convey what their level of understanding about this mystery called life that we live in, then I don't know. I'm conflicted. Especially when the person seems pretty functional, you know? Now, that all being said, you also have to question people's motives and their true character. And it's pretty evident to me that if she's got across her platforms collectively like 21, 21 or 20 million people to be invested in her, she is obviously a social media master and she's very good at psychologically manipulating and fabricated and fabricating characters, personas, realities for those who are watching to believe in, to engage with. And that shit runs up numbers. And on social media, numbers matter. So when you're posting 120 TikToks in the course of a day, and each one of those TikToks is getting 1.5 to 3.5 million authentic views. And you're a monetized creator. You tell me that those uh, numbers ain't going to contribute to a nice fat bank account. Now, I don't know her true intentions. But you can't put it past people who know how to masterfully exploit these systems for attention, for profitable gain. She could just be playing an insane character the whole time and have everybody... She manufactures the interest, the drama, people go buck. And then she just returns back to her prior self. Not saying it's what she did. Don't know for sure. Don't know her modus operandi. However, especially when you bring religion into the equation, it's divisive. Start talking about God in all types of ways. All types of people are going to start to feel some ways. And that's more engagement for her. So I don't know. I don't know if it's authentic. The other thing I'll say is I think she's just having a a lot of what she was saying 
it wasn't foreign to me as a concept. I was listening to a bunch of what she was saying and it wasn't over my head. I understood exactly kind of what she meant. So not in everything, of course, but in a lot of videos, she was just saying things that are a little more consciously graduated than your average 10 year old to 24 year old who was going to watch you on TikTok. And even then age is relevant, but still even there's a bunch of older people that it's just like, what level of awareness are you at? What level of consciousness about life are you at? And some people just aren't on your same level. And it seems like she's on a high, like a high level of awareness. And it seems like she's searching for answers and truth. And it might have drove her to the brink of this, these rantings, right? Where she feels like she kind of unlocked the code and, you know, she, she found the holy grail inside herself, of these answers of the universe and God and things like that. And perhaps she was stating it all a little too matter of factly, a little too firm, a little non speculative, speculative, speculatively, if I could speak. I feel like that's more the case of kind of what happened with her. And yes, I'm sweating my bag off. I'm very hot here today. And I tried to go to the pools, but the pools were closed for no good reason. Bummer. But yeah, that's my two cents about Gabby Hanna. And I, like I said, first-hand experience with many episodes. I've seen them firsthand. And trust me when I tell you, they're way crazier than what she was posting online on TikTok. Way crazier. Like, way more out of touch with reality. You know? And when I say that and I tell you guys this, that's a huge part of my life and my upbringing that I dealt with firsthand. That I got stories on stories on stories. But are they mine to really expose? I don't know. Because it involves my mother. So. But that's, I've always wanted to maybe start like a Patreon to have to tell all those things just because YouTube is so public and also it's like they censor everything and you get flagged for talking about real life shit and that's why I don't tell a lot of my stories that I used to because when I first started YouTube it wasn't like that yeah it was it, it was public but not a lot of people knew about my channel, so I felt more free to tell these stories. Sex stories and drugs and partying and all that type of shit. And ways I've steered wrong in life. <clears throat> but now, YouTube just censors all of that. They flag your video, demonetize you. So they, they made, YouTube made people lame, made me lame. And then so many people around me started knowing about my channel. And it's like, do I really want to tell all those stories and represent myself that way? And then, I don't know. So, for a long time, I've been thinking about having a Patreon page where I talk about the raw, truth, explicit shit, live stories, da 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 just charge like whatever I don't know 10 bucks a month or something 15 bucks I don't know to uh, be able to speak freely and filter out the riffraff the people who you know what I mean like haters and weirdos generally aren't going to pay money to come see your other shit right or even like somebody who knows you personally they might be like yeah, I'm not going to go pay to go behind this wall to find out shit that maybe I don't want to find out. But maybe they're curious as shit too. And they're like, for sure, I'm paying 15 bucks to know this motherfucker's secrets too. <laughs> so there's also that. But either way, I've always thought of, I want to do it. But once again, it's just my weird mind. I have a weird relationship with like money 
and charging people for stuff, even though that's how the world works and business works. And that's something that I need to get past. It's been holding me back for a long time with my relationship with charging for things and stuff like that. And if, and to find the idea in my head, like, oh, is what I'm going to offer in this paywall space, like even worth, you know what I mean? Can I produce something worth paying for in a sense? Cause you know, you know, YouTube is, uh, you create it with, you don't charge obviously, right? It's just like the free platform, but you're, so you like make money off it, but it's like, unless you're getting huge views, they're not making like money, money. It's always been a thought to me to like kind of be able to go back to a lot of my original ways of being on camera and bring them just to a privatized space and have like, you know, a chunk of people who are really down to be there and want to hear like all those other crazy things. But uh, it's just a matter of, I guess, me making it and pulling the trigger and then telling you guys about it. So we'll see if that ever happens, but it's always been a thought. All right, I'm so hot and I need the AC immediately, so. To all the fast food places, bring back chicken tenders. Why do like nobody have chicken tenders anymore? And also, be good, live well, stay true.